this video, we'll talk about some important new features coming to Race Capture. These features will greatly enhance the CAN bus and OBD2 mapping capabilities of the system. Let's check it out. So we go under Setup, and under Setup, we'll find a new section called CAN Mapping. Now, CAN bus is really important because ECUs communicate over CAN. They broadcast their sensor data, throttle position, RPM, engine temperature, and more, as well as sensors like tire temperature sensors, TPMS sensors, and other sensors that broadcast their data over CAN instead of a direct wire input. Now, Race Capture can support direct wire sensors as well as mapping data from CAN bus channels. And what we do right now is we have a rather powerful mechanism using Lua scripting, which uses a bit of simple code to map data from CAN bus messages and map those to telemetry channels. What we have now is a point-and-click, easier-to-use interface for connecting CAN bus data to your telemetry channels. So under Setup, you have a CAN mapping section and a window that lets you turn on your CAN channels. You have a button for presets and then an area that will show a list of CAN channels. So if we want to open a preset, we click the preset button, and in here you'll see a list of devices that you can select that will in batch bring in a bunch of CAN bus settings and CAN bus channels. So here as an example we have a mega squirt and then of course the, the ever popular BMW E46 CAN bus instrument cluster data stream. So in this demo we'll select the mega squirt which brings in CAN bus mappings for the mega squirt dashboard mode. So what you see here in the grid is each channel listed with channel name, sample rate, and some summary data about the, how the mapping is designed. So for example, RPM, we have CAN ID 1512, uh, and then the data is in offset 2, length 2, and then the formula is the raw data times 1 divided by 1 plus 0. Now you don't typically need to worry about any of this if you want to just use the, imp the, the preset as is. In most cases, you'll select the preset, write it to your race capture unit, and then as soon as the, the CAN bus wires are connected to the device, in this case the Megasquirt, you'll just start seeing data streaming to your dashboard or up to your live stream. Now the power comes in when you actually want to go in and edit those CAN bus channels. So to edit, you would click this edit button and then here you get to see all of the settings for mapping a, a CAN bus channel. So we'll kind of go through these one at a time. So since Race Capture Pro has two CAN bus channels, you get to choose what CAN bus channel your sensor network is connected to. This is really important because OBD, let's say you have OBD2 on one CAN bus channel, that's traditional, hooking right up to a CAN bus enabled OBD2 ECU, and on a second CAN bus channel you might have a sensor network, maybe some tire temperature sensors, maybe a TPMS system, maybe other temperature networks, maybe you have a bunch of EGT sensors that are hanging off of a CAN bus you probably want to hang those off of the second CAN bus channel so that it won't interfere with any OBD2 data and it might be running at a different CAN baud rate. So Race Capture Pro gives you the flexibility for that with two CAN bus channels. The next field is the CAN ID and that is like an identifier that the other, the other device, uh, in this case the Megasquirt, is broadcasting a message on ID 1512. The mask is an advanced feature that says, I want, if I define a mask, I want to filter out certain parts of the ID before I consider it 
as a channel for connecting via for a telemetry channel. So in most cases, you would just leave this as zero, and if it's set to zero, it has no effect. Now the mapping lets you extract data from the CAN bus segment. So each CAN bus message is eight bytes in length. So a bit of data, say RPM or throttle position, could be at offset zero with a length of two. So two bytes of data at offset zero. Again, most of you will never need to change these so long as the presets work correctly. But if you're mapping a new device, the data sheet for that device, that CAN bus enabled device, will tell you how to map that information. So these bits of inf these settings are very important. The next bit is bit mode. I think I just had a pun there. So bit mode lets you define your mapping on a bit by bit basis. So you can extract three bits of data from offset 25 in the CAN bus message. This is another advanced feature that most people won't need. However, certain CAN bus networks like the E46 uh, steering angle sensor has, fifth, has a 15 bit steering angle sensor channel, which you have to cleave off the last bit, otherwise you'll get invalid data. So this is another important feature that normally you wouldn't use, but if, if you do, it's there for you. The Indian is another is another setting that defines like if you have multi-byte raw values coming off of the CAN bus, sometimes the low byte shows up before the, the high order byte. In most cases, you use the, the uh, the big Indian mode, and you never have to touch that. Now, the interesting part is the formula. So let's say you get a raw value that has to be scaled into a real-world value. So, for example, you might have a temperature sensor that goes negative. So you have uh, 0 to 255 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but you have to offset it, offset it by minus 40. So here you have the raw value times something, in this case 1, divided by something, in this case 1, plus 0. So this formula effectively has, will map the raw value straight to the telemetry channel. Now if you need to multiply that value times 2, then you can do that, and then now the formula will define the channel as the raw value times 2, divided by one plus zero. So this gives you the, m the maximum amount of flexibility to map nearly every case of CAN bus data to a telemetry channel. Again, this is only if you need to go and edit or customize your own CAN mappings. In most cases, you can import the preset and it'll work as is. On the sample rate, you can choose what sample rates you want. Most, in most cases, the faster moving sensors will be will be at 10 hertz to 25 to 50 hertz, and then the slower sensors could be set to one hertz. For example, coolant engine coolant doesn't change very quickly. One would hope, so you could safely set that to one hertz, and then things like RPM, throttle position, manifold pressure you can set those to 10 hertz or 25 hertz. So if we go to the OBD2 settings, we have also greatly improved the OBD2 mapping capabilities. Currently what we have are the SAE standard OBD2 channel mappings, and, there's, and it's pretty basic. What we have now is the ability to pull from a list of preset channels. These are the convenient channels that appear on most cars. These are the SAE standard channels. So engine temperature, engine load, fuel level. Actually, oil temperature is a rather uncommon channel, but it's listed as an SAE standard, throttle position, and so on. 
what you'll be able to do now is map a custom OBD2 PID. And on this screen, it looks very familiar to the CAN bus mapping that you saw before, but we've added the ability to specify a PID, whatever PID you need between 0 and 255. You'll be able to specify a mode. Mode 1 is to get the current data from OBD2. Mode 9 has a few special PIDs that you might be interested in. And then the magical Mode 22 is the retrieve OEM data from a memory block. So this is the case where you need to get some special value from a memory bank and then usually people who do reverse engineering of ECUs will typically enable a mode 22 to get special data that isn't supported by normal OBD2. Uh, the other option that we're adding is the ability for this OBD2 mapping to operate in passive mode. So this is a, a mode where we don't, the race capture won't actively request the OBD2 PID, but if it's spying on, on the existing OBD2 traffic, let's say you have another device that's doing OBD2 uh, request replies, only one device at a time can do a request reply uh, as designed by the protocol. The passive mode will just listen to the traffic and update telemetry channels if it sees any of these, any matching OBD2 PIDs. Uh, coming by, so that was that is that's another uh, oft requested feature. The rest uh, of the mapping is very similar. You can set the CAN channel uh, with OBD2. It'll almost always be one. Uh, most OBD2 PIDs, uh, the ID comes back on ID 2024. This is very standard, and then the the data is almost always on offset two and either with a length of one or two. And then the formula will vary based on whatever OBD2 PID is selected. Now, what we will have with preset channels is a bunch of channels that will have pre-configured OBD2 mappings, and here you see on the formulas for the IAT, inlet air temperature, you have the formula is raw times 1 divided by 1 minus 40. So we need to be able to measure minus 40 degrees for the air inlet temperature. If we select another one, throttle position, and edit the setting, then you see the throttle position is 1, the raw value times 1, divided by 2.55, so you get a full sweep of 0 to 100% throttle position. And there you have it. With these two major improvements to CAN bus mapping, as well as OBD2 support, this will be a dramatic improvement and comprehensive ability to map CAN bus and OBD2 channel data for Race Capture and Race Capture Pro. So we hope you enjoyed this little demo and watch for news for when we get this released in the near future. Thank you.